Hi there, I'm Chris Hay, and welcome to another weekly co-working call. This week we have Adam Hudson, who is a coalition member with Evolved Enterprise, and also a top Amazon seller, and the founder of several Amazon-related businesses, including Reliable Education, which teaches entrepreneurs how to set up and maintain a successful business selling physical products on Amazon. Enjoy. So yeah, thanks again so much for, for joining us, Adam. So great to have you here, mate, and looking forward to digging in and hearing all about what you've been up to. And uh, yeah, there's um, a, yeah, a, lot of, a lot of exciting stuff, both with your Amazon business and, um, and the impact, impact component that you've been up to recently that I'm really excited to chat with you about. Sure. Cool. So uh, just to give you a little introduction for those who don't know Adam, Adam is essentially a serial entrepreneur who's built several multi-million dollar companies both in Australia, where he's from, and in the United States. In 2005, Adam co-founded one of the first crowdfunding platforms in the world, which went on to raise an excess of $100 million for startups and early stage businesses. But uh, where he's currently at now is he owns a SaaS software company that services Amazon sellers and, um, and an Amazon marketing service firm, a homeware brand that sells its products exclusively through Amazon and also reliable education, which teaches people how to sell on Amazon. So if you haven't picked it up already, uh, Adam is an Amazon expert and, um, and a fantastic uh, person to come on and speak to us about about this marketplace, which is obviously just uh, is, is, a, is a juggernaut already, but is just keeps keeps getting bigger as the trend towards online marketing. Uh, sorry, online uh, e-commerce continues, and that's of particular interest to um, to our audience. Who you know, a lot of them are uh, well, pretty much all of our audience are entrepreneurs and aspiring, impactful entrepreneurs. So, in particular, I'm really interested in this um, intersection of these two massive trends. You know, this trend of um, moving towards e-commerce and also the trend of moving towards businesses um, being a, a force for good in the world and taking on responsibility for some of these social or environmental challenges that we face. And Adam is at the forefront of doing both of those things. So uh, without further ado, Adam, do you want to maybe tell us just a little bit about how you got to be, uh, how you got into Amazon, I guess? Yeah, sure. I'm just closing the doors here because the ocean's quite loud here today. Cool. Um, uh, that's, that's better. I can hear you a lot better. Um, cool. Yeah, so look, my story in a nutshell was I, uh, I moved to the United States in 2011 mm -hmm. and started a small animation company which um, became quite successful, a, a little boutique shop. Um, and um, we're, I basically uh, was doing videos for uh, startups in Silicon Valley as well as um, large corporates. We did work for about 15 of the top 100 companies in the US, so uh, MasterCard and all those companies. Um, 2014, I sort of started to know that I wanted to sell that company uh, because I, I was, um, you know, getting older. I'm, I'm 43 now and I, I started to realise that perhaps selling services wasn't something I wanted to do forever, uh, right. even though I I wasn't an animator. I didn't do the animation. Whenever somebody pays you in a service business, they're fundamentally writing a check out for your time or the time of somebody you've got to hire and uh, support and so on. And so I, somebody uh, showed me um, what Amazon was doing back in 2011 when I first moved to States, actually. And so while I was building the animation company, I learned to start a private label brand on Amazon selling physical products on the right. Amazon marketplace. Uh -huh. using an FBA and I discovered it just simply by seeing these Amazon boxes outside of everybody's doors and asking questions and right. uh, it drew my attention and I started to look into Amazon and their FBA program that allows you to uh, put your inventory into their warehouses and then they bring the customers, they have the stock in their warehouses and they send it out and I was like, this is a dream business. So um, I started that alongside uh, my animation studio. Uh-huh. Cool. So that's and yeah right and um and so did it get to a point i guess where like where you were making enough from your amazon business that you could sort of just pack in or or, or exit from the from the animation business or did you have to sort of take a bit of a leap of faith or how did that transition yeah. happen for you so so what happened was um i basically did did it as a hobby when i first started i started with one product in the home and kitchen category Mm -hmm. that I was interested in. It was just a simple product, but it was a product I used myself. 
And um, I thought I'd make a high quality version of what was on Amazon. So I put beautiful packaging with it and made it into a really nice product. And I just sort of chipped away at it. And then I put it onto the marketplace and within six months, that first little product was doing about 15,000 US dollars a month in sales, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much completely passively um, and uh, at about 40% margin. So I was basically making six grand okay. a month for doing really not much after the initial work was done. Yeah. And that got my attention as an entrepreneur. I thought, well, what if I had 10 products and what if I was in yeah. more Amazon marketplace? And today I'm in 35 countries. And um, But at the time that I, uh, it, it enabled me to sell my animation company in 2015 um, and, uh, and continue on with that business, which had grown into a seven-figure business by that time. Yeah, right. Okay, cool. And then what, uh, what compelled you to make the leap from selling online to teaching other people to sell online? Well, in 2000, and I think it was 14 or 15, I, I walked outside of my office in uh, Hollywood. By that time, we'd moved offices. We started on Hollywood Boulevard and we moved down to Sunset Boulevard. And um, I went to get a coffee with one of my employees and we were walking up the street and uh, I didn't feel very well and I just, something wasn't right. And then it looked like the street was falling away in front of me and I felt really dizzy. And um, I said to my employee, I think I better go back to the office. So I walked back towards the office and then um, ended up lying down on the car park floor and having an ambulance pick me up. Um, and I, I thought I was having a heart attack. Um, my heart rate went, went through the roof and uh, I was rushed to hospital and they diagnosed me with um, acute panic attacks and vertigo oh, wow. um, at, at the same time. And I'd never had panic attacks or anxiety or anything prior to that, but I was doing so much at that time. I had four companies in Los Angeles um, and you know, the universe was just tapping me on the shoulder and saying, um, all right, well, if you're not going to listen to all the little signs we're sending you, we're going to slow you down. Right. And I suffered for two years from debilitating anxiety. I was hospitalized twice in that time. Wow. And um, I ended up going to Bali as part of the treatment. Uh, I decided to go natural. They wanted to put me on um, drugs to slow me down. And I just said, I don't want that. So I went to Bali and did a bit of an eat, pray, love moment in my life. And... Um, uh, I was in a pretty dark place, to be honest. I was, um, you know, it was around the time ISIS was cutting people's heads off and it was really affecting me. Right. And uh, I thought the world had just gone to hell in a handbasket and I was really unhappy, actually, underneath everything. And this retreat, um, the guy who ran it was uh, a cancer survivor from San Diego and he really helped me come out of that darkness and depression almost, but anxiety. I was successful. Like I was making money. My businesses were doing great from the outside. Everybody thought, what's this guy got to complain about? He came to America. He became successful, quote, unquote. Um, but in Bali, I realized, you know, what was I doing all this for? And for my whole career, for 20 years, I've been chasing carrots. In fact, it starts when you go to school. You go to school, you get told you get good grades, and then you get a grade two and then you get to grade you get to go to grade three and, and then you get in the workforce and the same process repeats and so um i got to bali and i thought i'm 40 years old i'm unhappy and um i have if i sold my animation company particularly i'd have everything that anybody could possibly want so um where does the happiness come into my life where does that where do, when am i going to take that seriously and so I rang my brokers in LA from Bali. I was on a little island called Chenigan, which is uh, off, it's an island off an island. And I said, look, if you can sell the business, this is how much I want. And within a week, I was still on the island. I had two offers for more than I asked. I signed one of those offers in my board shorts at the table in nice. Bali. I went back to America, picked up my check, and then um, decided that I was going to make some changes. One of those changes was, what I really, because um, the guy who ran the retreat said, Adam, what brings you joy? And what was really scary was maybe write down a bit of paper. He said, on the left-hand side, write down moments in your life where you experience true happiness. Yeah. And the great part was it took me a few minutes to think of one thing where I was authentically joyful. Wow. And then I finally got one down and then the second thing down. And then on the other side, he said, write down how you spend your day. And there was no match. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. to adjust those lists and part of that one of the things was being on the ocean I showed you before but this is where I'm sitting now and um, I'm sitting here now because 
in, in that time, I wrote on the list, what brings me joy is the ocean, being in the ocean every day. So with part of the proceeds from the sale, I bought this place on the beach and I get in the ocean every day and it brings me joy. So, you know, so one of the other things was teaching because I was already teaching people how to build a business on Amazon. All my friends were like, how did you build this million dollar company while you're working your animation company? I had a flight simulation business, I had all sorts of stuff. And so I started teaching them and I was, I was enjoying it. And so I thought, I'm going to make teaching part of my life. And um, so I sketched out the little notes of how I was going to do this course two years ago. And now we've got students in 20 countries. It's become a, a multi seven figure business as well. So that's the that's story. That's pretty amazing story, man. That's, that's very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, the other piece, Chris, is probably of good interest to you and the crew was that I wanted to build in giving. Yeah. One of my, one of my heroes is Paul Newman, and I love uh-huh. the idea of a company that is 100% for profit that goes on in perpetuity but beyond your lifetime with the proceeds mm-hmm. going. So from day one with all of my companies after I sold the animation, I, I sought to build in charity and mm-hmm. we've done that with all the companies now and um, honestly, the windfall has uh, just been buried in blessings financially and otherwise as a result of making that shift and we get to be super fulfilled. So it's not like they're mutually exclusive that giving Mm -hmm. to charity a hole in your pocket. It actually means a supplement to your pocket as well because people want to do business with with companies. And I was on a flight between Singapore and LA and I watched a, we were already partnered with Kiva. We've done over a thousand interest-free loans through Kiva to third world entrepreneurs, but I wanted to do more. And I was flying from Singapore to LA and I watched this video on this organization that did cataract surgery for the blind in Indonesia. It's 4 million people in Indonesia that are blind. Uh-huh. Needless, 20 minute operation could, could fix it. It's mind blowing, show- right? Like, I mean, what this is like, of all of the gifts that you could give to people, you know, like if they're someone who's blind to give them their vision back, um, yeah. it's incredible. And, and just, and the fact that, uh, you know, it's such a simple procedure when, when, when the resources are available, and then also this other factor that I'm sure that you'll speak about, which is that not only do you give them back their vision, but then, you know, their, their lives change so markedly as a result of that, right? And they can gain their livelihoods back. You give them their dignity back because they're a burden on their community and they know that. Um, so you've got, you know, older people that are blind, and they, you know, they can't do anything, so they can't work, so they're broke. So they've got this poverty cycle going because they can't work because they're blind and they're blind because they can't afford the surgery man it's and, terrible and all for the sake of like what does it cost to give one of those people depends on how you do a bit of 100 bucks operation 100 bucks you know man. depending on how you participate we're at the stage now where we sponsor an entire village in indonesia so we pay for about 30 surgeons and support staff and all the equipment yeah. to go remote because indonesia is 14 000 islands many of which are that's amazing yeah. So we go up there and we put 2,000 villages through free eye examinations. Out of that, about uh, 200 people that are completely blind are healed. And then we do prosthetic eyes, probably about 20, and then we do about 300 pairs of glasses. Um, and it's all free and paid for by the company. And um, it, it's just, you know, you see these people and you see little kids come over on a boat that are blind and have followed their parents around by the voice their whole life, never seen the ocean. They get the bandages off and... They, um... Yeah, <laughs> unreal, man. You know, and it's unreal. And to have that in your business is pretty amazing. No doubt. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, yeah, there's not many uh, impact kind of give back components that I, I I can think of that are so so. <laughs> Visible is a funny word to use, but like so, like just immediate, and like you can see the effect on the people's lives that you're that you're having. So that's massive, man. I just huge respect for that. I saw your video on um on on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, and uh, yeah, just so impressed by by what you're doing there, and with the the, the uh, partner that you're partnered up with there, John Fawcett Foundation, is it? Yeah, I mean they're um. There's this guy, John Fawcett, he's an Australian from Perth and for 50, uh, sorry, for 20 years he's been stationed in Sanua in Bali and, um, you know, he's, there's 50,000 people walking around in Indonesia now that are, have their vision because of this guy, you know, who had a work accident uh, as, a, as a university, as an educator 
and uh, couldn't work. So he left to Indonesia and said, I don't want to live out the rest of my days on lawn bowls. Still love lawn bowls, I love that. <laughs> and moved over there and now the Indonesian Air Force give him planes for free. Wow. And uh, he's, he's 50,000 people were blind before he came along and uh, such a, a, a thankless guy, you know. And That's unreal, man. What a legacy. So easy to help these people, you know. It's such a small investment. I mean, we live in these Australia and, and America and we, we're sort of buried in treasure and uh, it's so easy to help and have such a big impact and it's not a lot of money and yeah. the impact is so the, the qualitative addition to your life is enormous so absolutely and um do you do you have a big team like i'm interested in um in, in how how like what, what your team think of this you probably don't have a massive team i guess because like the amazon model is pretty lean and fulfillment's all done by amazon and whatnot but do you have a team and like if so what's their attitude towards this impact component mm, so we have um our, our, it's our education business so we educate entrepreneurs on how to sell on amazon and we have we've, we've sold the course for about nine months and we've got i think about 1200 students um and those students love it. Like whenever we do a webinar to sell a course or whenever we're doing any of that stuff, yeah. before we get into it, um, we, um, we talk, we say, look, here's who we are and this is the work that we do in the world and now we'll talk about Amazon because I want to raise awareness for it no matter what. Yeah. So I honestly believe that it actually, convert, it's a conversion technique, not that uh -huh. we, we... Not that's why it. you do it, but yeah. But I believe people do resonate with that and go, these guys are not self-centered, uh, money-grabbing people. And we really are not there in our life. We, you know, we sell the course because we believe it empowers people and it's a great opportunity. But um, it does make a difference. I just got booked yesterday on a show in the US with William Shatner, um, you know, Star Trek fame. Yeah, wow. Well. Producer, producers rang me and they said, we're considering you for the show. Um, can we talk to you about what you do? And then two ladies who were interviewing me from Malibu said, um, I, I said, oh, this is something else that we do. And they were just floored. They were just speechless. And they said, look, we're going to take this to William today. Um, they rang me this morning and said, we'd love to have you on the show. So I'm certain that part of it was that how it touches people. And, um, yeah. and now I'm you know, getting 15 minutes on a show that goes into 14 million homes for free. Um, <laughs> You couldn't buy the publicity. I mean, Chatner got paid forty million dollars for the um, for the for his endorsement of uh, you know uh, that big insurance company or whatever it is, the negotiator. You know, right. we get fifteen of their time with him for nothing, uh, and because we touch them, and and uh, it's a pretty powerful concept. You know, from a business point of view, we've had so much press and PR. Um, it's just nuts uh, as a result. Wow! Yeah, amazing. So, yeah, so not only resonates with your clients and really sets, sets you apart from, from them in this cluttered and cutthroat, often kind of um, bizarre online environment, but then also the, also the, the, the um, PR and, and other exposure, huh? A hundred percent. And in, in our industry, in particularly selling how to make money on the internet, I mean, it's just... Yeah, cool. there's a few sharks, a couple, of, maybe a couple of sharks in that market. <laughs> One or two. <laughs> yeah. As a result, I mean, we have such a, our community, I would take the Pepsi challenge is probably one of the most engaged communities in the entire info marketing business. And that says a big claim because there's millions of them, but they have bought in um, completely into our mission of when you invest in yourself to become an entrepreneur, we make a, a micro loan to an entrepreneur in a third world country. Yeah. And part of your money is going towards restoring vision to people who are far less privileged than us. Right. And they buy in and they love that idea uh -huh. um, because, you know, and yeah, we make a little bit less money as a result of it, but this industry, you make so much money anyway. It's, 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 you, I just don't understand why everybody in this industry doesn't do it because they're trying to hang on to everything so tightly, but uh, the universe tends to bury you in abundance when you, um, when you give and I was a bit slow on the uptake on that one, but I finally got it. Yeah. Right. Better late than never. <laughs> uh, so what do you think about um, when people buy on Amazon, are they largely buying like in a quite a transactional fashion? I know that obviously uh, reviews are a massive component, right? But like, is there much space do you think, or will people take much notice when they're buying on Amazon? If a, if a, um, one second, 
my music just started playing and disrupted me. So would people buy, um, yeah, sorry, let me start that again. So when people buy on Amazon, it seems to be quite transactional, right? Like I go there and I might search for a type of product that I'm interested in and I click around and I find the one that has the most reviews. How much space do you think there is in that um, in Amazon as a marketplace for for a company to differentiate itself through its ethos and values and what it believes in and what, and what it's like what its impact component might be? Like obviously you can write that into the description and maybe you can explain it to people in the materials that get sent out with the product. So maybe that will influence the the ratings that they um, that they put up. They might say, "Hey, great product!" and I love the impact component. Something like that. But like. What's what's uh, what's the reality? Do you think for an evolved enterprise wanting to sell on Amazon, and do you think they can use use it uh, their impact mission as a different as a uh, differentiation point? Yeah, I, I absolutely know that you can, and in fact, a very good friend of mine who just joined Mavericks, uh, Michael Quinn. I think he's just joined. Um, Michael's on a mission. He's he started an Amazon business with his mum, mm-hmm. so it's. He sends out that we're a mum and son business and he puts a photo of the two of them in a little thing that goes in every box. And they, they sell tens of thousands of units a month. Um, so that's tens of thousands of people getting this photo and they talk about their social impact that they're involved with as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I met Michael in Ubud, Bali, um, at, randomly at a cafe and we're both Amazon sellers. But I know that there are, the sellers are doing that right now. I think it depends a little on what you're actually selling. If what you're mm-hmm. selling has some environmental um, impact or you give back. But I think I think it definitely would influence reviews and how harsh people will be on you. Because people are notoriously brutal on the internet if they're unhappy. Yeah, yeah. Because they're removed. They're not saying it to your face, right? <laughs> yeah, but when you put a photo of yourself, you know, I mean, it's a fine line between... Um, I think it all comes down to where your heart is because there are some people that uh, would see it purely as, oh, I'm going to go get the photo with the uh, blind person and then I'm going to leverage that. <laughs> so it's a fine line between that and I think mm. it really is on where your heart is. But if you if your heart's in the right place, um, I think you can definitely have an impact that way. And, um, and uh, you know, you know when you know you're doing it for the right reason and, and that's the main thing, I think. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right, great. Um, <clears throat> maybe we can dig into a, a little bit of tactical stuff for the benefit of the people on the call. Obviously, they've shown up because they're interested in Amazon and maybe interested in sort of starting something on Amazon themselves. Um, I, and I noticed on your Facebook, uh, on your Facebook wall, uh, I think maybe yesterday you posted that you were hosting a webinar with the seven secrets to building a successful business on Amazon. Sure. Um, it, um, would you mind touching on some of those secrets for us? Sure, and I'd be happy to send the replay link if you want it to send to any of your people. Sure. Um, uh, okay, let me think about it. Um, I was, I was <laughs> yeah, put you on the spot. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so the first thing that I teach people on Amazon, yeah. but getting to the tactical side, is that um, First of all, there's a couple of points I always cover on webinars. And the first one is that Amazon is something you should do as a sideline when you're first beginning. Because it's a product-based business, you need to research and you need to get samples from your supplier because I teach what's called white labeling, which is where you create your own brand, source the product from somewhere like China or elsewhere in the world. Uh-huh. And, and you you know get the sample in and you look at it and you package it and then you send it off to Amazon directly from the manufacturer, let's say in China, into Amazon's warehouses. So it's not something you can do quickly when you're first learning because you're, you're discovering niches. So you do it as a sideline. And a lot of our competitors who sell Amazon courses sort of say, oh, you can you know, make 100000 a month after three months and here's five people that have done that. Um, I don't think that's a wise way to go into it because expectation when you go into something is really, really important. If you know that for the first year it's going to be learning and samples and you know doing all that, you don't feel bad if six to nine months down the track you're only just starting to launch. You start, you realize that's the journey, and, and that's For why sure. our community is so happy. So that's the first thing. And the is, second is, there thing any, is, is there any way you can expedite that though? Let's say if you did want to go, like if you would, if you'd already quit your day job or or whatever, and you were wanting to go all in, how would you how would you shorten that yeah, process? You can. <laughs> um, so the, you know, if you really want to shorten it, you would just um, uh, you you would you would probably go to 
Uh, I mean, I don't know because I don't do this method, but I suppose you would just go to Alibaba, pick something. Alibaba is a sourcing site where you can find, let's say you want to sell rubber ducks. Mm -hmm. You can go to Alibaba, you can contact a rubber duck manufacturer. You can put up what's called an RFQ. So I want a thousand rubber ducks. You'll get quotes from all these rubber duck manufacturers. And then you could order a thousand of them, have them shipped straight over to Amazon and start selling. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the challenge of Amazon to have a successful business, in my opinion, you need to do what's called visual differentiation. So, um, you, you know, Amazon's like a dating site for products. So if you think of a dating site, you put in, I'm looking nice for analogy. Ads. Yeah. yeah. So Swipe when you go, <laughs> yeah, you open Tinder. If we're honest, the first thing you look at is the photo and you go, yes, <laughs> No, 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 really? We do the same thing in Amazon. And so there's two components to a photo. One is the quality of the photo, which in uh -huh. e-commerce is be outstanding. And the second thing is the content of the photo. So if you've got a product that is visually differentiated and actually looks different, a simple example is car covers. So if you go to Amazon, you type in car covers, all of page one is black, blue, or gray. And nobody has come out with a bright pink one with a silver tiara printed on where the windscreen is that says the princess mobile. Okay, somebody, that's the market opportunity right there. <laughs> Adam's pick yeah, of the day. <laughs> I can see Suzette's enjoying that one. She's having a yeah. nice laugh. <laughs> Um, if somebody had that um, on there and uh, you ran an ad from day one, assuming that you've got, say, 10 reviews, if you're you know, somebody that would like a pink car cover with Princess Mobile written on it and a silver tiara, there's no question that you're going to click on that ad. So uh -huh. the beauty of Amazon is that it's big enough that there's little niches like that can make people a lot of money. And we right. give in the webinar, we show real examples of real products and what they make. And the key uh -huh. is size of the market is just so massive one in every two dollars in america spent on e-commerce on any website that sells anything pretty much physical products 50 percent of the business is going to amazon so you add up all the other absolutely unreal amazon does that yeah <laughs> that's nuts so visual differentiation is really important um and rather than just picking anything because the day comes when somebody types in rubber ducks and you're, if you're just another rubber duck and you're the last, you're the newest guy there, you have the least reviews, why are they going to buy from you? Well, the only thing is photography and price after that. But if right. your rubber duck has sunglasses and a dinosaur riding on the back, that's pretty boom, cool. That's a cool rubber duck, right? <laughs> Hella cool. Uh, yeah, now you've got the coolest rubber duck with nobody else selling the same thing. So right. that visual differentiation is where the time is. And my products are available in catalogs straight off the shelf out of supplies in China, but it took me months to find the supplies and dig through thousands of products. And I, I said, I want the weird stuff that looks strange. And um, they sent me some odd looking things and then I photographed them beautifully. And now they, they sell and have styled really, really well for a long time. So it's that selection criteria that the get rich quick people don't want to tell you because it involves thinking and time, right. uh, which is not sexy when you're trying to sell, just buy my course and make money. Yeah, and so you control the, photo, the photography of your own products. You you don't just let the you don't you don't take the supplier the photos from the supplier. No, you get no. you get a few samples across to you, and you get them professionally shot. Yeah, in fact, I own a photography company now that does that in Florida called SellerPhoto.com, and all we do is product photography for online sellers. Wow, and we deal with uh, you know very large companies that do five or ten million dollars a month on Amazon, down to mm -hmm. just startup people who have just got their first product that they're uh -huh. trying to launch. So it costs about $800 to $1,000 for a full set of photos for a product that's professionally shot, beautifully done with hand modeling and, you know, and all that stuff. Right. And, and the other thing is don't be afraid to be more expensive than your competitors. A lot of people think on Amazon you've got to be the cheapest, but the data actually bears out in many niches that the best-selling items are not the cheapest. Um, okay. They're... Yeah, uh, my products, uh, I, I, one of my brands has eight, um, just eight products, does well over a million dollars US a year at about 40% margin. And it's only eight products. It's not a lot of products. And of those eight, three or four of them are on page one for the biggest search term. Yet the nearest competitor to me, so there's um, 20 results on page one, I take up three of them. The other 17 competitors, the next uh, competitor price wise is half the price of me and everybody else is cheaper than that again. Whoa. And so, so how yes. do you differentiate yourself? Surely it's got to be 
more than just great photos, right? Uh, yeah, beautiful product that's unique, and uh -huh. then beautiful photography. Yeah. And now people have found the same products and they're trying to sell it for half my price or less, but they're not denting me because I've got wow. amazing photography, I've got the most reviews, and I've got the best packaging. Wow. And so my customers review like, this company is amazing because we put a card in the box, introducing them to the company, thanking them for their business, telling them if there's any problems, please here's my direct email and cell phone, you can call me 24 hours a day, nobody ever does. But they're just so impressed with the service level and the packaging and the care. Like Chinese factories who make the products I sell are literally listing against me at a third the price and still can't beat me. Wow. Um, because not everybody wants the cheapest thing. There's, there's 10 and a half million millionaires in America. If you're a millionaire and you're thinking of buying a, a product, like my product's often gifted to men, um, and you're going to go, well, I can buy this one here, which has got 255 star reviews, which are all amazing. I can buy this one out of a supplier in China that I've got to wait a week for. This guy's going to ship it in two days. This one comes with a beautiful box. This one doesn't. It's $14 versus $40. Most people go, you know, 25 Whatever. bucks. I'm just going to get one. And, <laughs> and it's got a ton more reviews. This other one must be just a cheap copy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I've actually had emails from people asking me what my product should weigh because they're concerned. They tried to resell my product on eBay or something because I didn't use it anymore. And somebody came around and said, I don't think it's an original. And I'm like, it's all from China. But it's just the packaging is so good that you would never wow. think it is. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. that's sort of a bit of an insight. I don't, I don't focus on cheap products. I, I don't want to be the cheapest. I want to be the best. And the other advantage of that and the reason I'm able to have such a, an amazing life now is because my product is quality and the packaging is beautiful and I've got all that going. I don't have customers writing in and complaining or the product doesn't break or anything because I didn't cheap out at the beginning. Going for a slightly higher tier of, tier of products with less malfunctions and breakages and whatnot yeah. and there's a slightly higher tier of customers who might be a bit less niggly, do you think, or...? Yeah, well, it, yeah, and also with, out of China, I never try to go with the cheapest supplier. And it's kind of counterintuitive because people who want to get into a business want to take as little risk as possible. Mm -hmm. So they, they assume that the best way to do that is get the product as cheap as they can because they want to risk as little of their capital as they can. But by doing that, you're actually putting yourself at the greatest risk because if you actually are going to go into the rubber duck business, what do you know about manufacturing rubber ducks right now? Not a whole Nothing. lot. Why would you buy the cheapest supplier of rubber ducks? Because the Chinese yeah. will tell you, oh, yeah, no problem. We, we can match whatever price you want. What they don't tell you is that, that that rubber duck, they'll put cheaper glue and they'll change their yellow paint to this cheap lead based stuff mm -hmm. that runs on the water. And now you go, yes, I've had a win. I've got this cheap rubber duck, but then it sinks and then it pees in the bath when the yellow paint <laughs> runs into the water. Right. <laughs> Well, you're stuck with 998 yellow ducks because the first two people that bought it wrote a yeah. review that these yellow ducks leak and sink. So, right. so what you want to be when you're buying from China is you want to be saying, what are all the things that go wrong with rubber ducks? And uh -huh. why would I, if I paid you more, like 20% more, what could you do to make this the most unsinkable, you know, um, rubber duck in the market? What could you do to make it quality? So it's kind of counterintuitive because most people, as I said, they do what most people do is they go into this mentality that I've got to get the best price yeah. instead of I've got the best quality. And when you're selling on Amazon, the quality is important because people are going to, if they love your product, they might review, but if they hate your product, they definitely will review. Right. Yeah. That's an interesting little maxim. Um, and so how do you, how do you manage that quality control? Cause you're ordering product that goes direct to fulfillment by Amazon so you never see it so how do you know if it's like up to up to quality and before and other than like putting it on Amazon and waiting for the bad reviews to come in if it's not that's also a very good question so <laughs> I didn't even think about that when I first started I just thought how cool is it that you could send stuff from China to Amazon and not touch it right but of course that's the question so we actually work with um, third-party uh, quality um, control companies okay it costs about dollars a day and they will go into the factory as an independent auditor and they go in with like a checklist that you work on them and they they will stand there i actually get my products uh, uh, checked during the actual manufacture while they're coming off the production line and then right. once they say yes your shipment's ready i send in the inspector and open up about 10 percent of the package boxes open them inspect them for all the qualitative things they give me a report pass or fail then the factory has to fix um and there's a 
you know, there's a threshold that is acceptable, not acceptable. So I get them inspected twice, cost me about $600. But when you're making orders, the last order I did was about a hundred and something thousand dollars. Now I start off with 20 grand and today I've got hundreds of thousands of dollars of inventory that was all paid for just by reinvesting my profits rather than putting my hand in my pocket again. But, um, yeah, so I, I have quality controllers that go in and, um, they go and do that all for me. And, um, yeah, that works really well. Yeah, right. Okay, so then once you get a product, you, you source a product from China, you get it white labeled, you maybe get the quality uh, control assistance on the way through, you get your product through to Amazon uh, FBA, and then and you you just you create your Amazon account, you sign up, you get your, your listing, uh, then what, you just sit and wait for the, the money to start rolling in, or how does that part work? Yes. So this is another piece that most courses leave out. That's what they try to make you believe that, yeah, just open up an Amazon account, put up a page, import any old product from uh, China, as long as you've established that it's selling on Amazon and you'll be right. Uh-huh. So the next phase, Chris, is assuming you've got a visually differentiated product, uh-huh. that, you know, all you got to do is build a business case. You've got to go, if I plonked this product into this environment, so look at page, let's say you wanted to sell um, this, right? This is just sitting on my desk. It's a, it's a candle, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say you want to sell these. You go to page one of Amazon, you'd say, okay, I've got this product I really like that I've sourced in China. If you plonk it in the middle of those page one results, why will people buy it? And if you can answer the question visually because it's so visually different like the car cover, that's a great first step. Then you mm-hmm. can also go, okay, the, the photos here are nothing amazing. Um, I can do amazing photography. And then what you've got to do is you've got things like copy, sales copy and keywording. But if you've got the visual differentiation, and high quality photos, the rest is fairly simple. So then what you need to do, the first thing you need to do is get reviews. So um, you need to get at least 10 reviews. So between 10 and 100. So I imagine you can just go to Fiverr for that, right? No. No. There are little tricks that we teach to do it. One of them, which I'll share with you, which I don't normally share, is we go to Amazon, you look at people who've reviewed products that are similar to the one that you're trying to sell, uh-huh. and you can contact them. So you email and you say, hey, uh, Chris, I noticed that you reviewed this product, and uh, that's really cool. We sell similar things, and we're just looking for people to give us feedback, because you can't ask them to, to leave the, okay. like you can't incentivize them. You can't give them a coupon to get the product for free on Amazon, and then ask them for a review. So what you do is you say, hey, look, we'd love to get your feedback, seeing as you're an active reviewer. Here's a coupon. Just go to Amazon, grab one for yourself, and just email me and let me know what you think uh, of the packaging. Did it arrive okay? You know, you put like this all in writing in an email, but you don't ask for a review. And of course, they go, oh, my goodness, thank you. That's very kind of you. And they feel all important, right? Mm-hmm. And you start a discussion. So say, like, Chris, I thank you so much, and da-da-da-da-da. And then they love you. At this point, they think you're amazing. No doubt. You're selling something for nothing, right? Yeah. And I say, look, if you really love it, you know, uh, that, they, that half the time they'll say, look, I'm going to go and write a review for you. Uh-huh. And that's, and so you can, we've got students here in Australia that know nobody in America and are reaching out to people all over the country over there. And the right. and then housewives and, and, and guys that are working and whatever. And they're getting free stuff. And they're like, this is awesome. So mm-hmm. um, people who have jobs and whatever. And they just, they're getting with this. So um, and without even asking for them, but just giving them the product and asking them for feedback on the product. So once you've got the 10 uh, reviews, then um, the next thing that we do is we take our students to one of my other companies. I've got four companies. One of them is Market Hustle. So it's Hustle without the E. Market Hustle, H-U-S-T-L dot com. And what we do there is we actually have about 50,000 consumers in our database and we email them out and we say, hey guys, today we've got these amazing, you know, bamboo-based candles from Adam Company. Um, we only have five coupons today. We just want people to go there and give us feedback what they think. Exactly what I just said, but at scale. So uh, we, they will tell you how many sales a day the top candles, the candles on page one are selling. And so they'll say, where do you want to go? Do you want to go to page to number one or do you, would you be happy to go to number five? Because the guy at number five is doing... 15 sales a day. So what we do is we give away 15 units a day for you for a couple of weeks. And so Amazon's algorithm goes, oh, look at this 
candle that's doing 15 Popular. minutes a day, it's converting like crazy. So the algorithm pushes you up onto page one. Right. And if you've done you taught you correctly and you've got a visually differentiated product that is at a fair price and beautifully photographed and has a business case, remember how I said just before, you've got to be able to answer the business case before you go live. Mm -hmm. What happens is the organic traffic on Amazon sees it at number five or number four. Mm -hmm. And if it really is better, it will start selling organically. And then we taper down the simulated sales and you're off to the races. In fact, one of our students just did this out of Waiheke Island in New Zealand. Uh, started a little product. Jeremy Zimzan? Yes. He's a <laughs> yeah, yeah. member as well. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. So Jeremy's a terrific guy. Actually, Jeremy, I met at the Bali retreat. That's how we met. Right. And he had, he mentioned that guy to me as well. Um, what's the guy's name in Bali? Uh, Rick Cowley. Rick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had a call with Rick and, yeah, sort of, Touch, yeah, uncovered a little bit about what he does and his story. And yeah, it, seems, it sounds like a fascinating guy. And he invited me to come onto his um, Vision Quest program, which was like a 12 week program. But at, the, at that time, we were in the middle of a launch and I couldn't, didn't quite have the bandwidth. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to digging into some of his content more. Obviously, it really touched you. That's a true, he's a terrific guy. Yeah. And I met Jeremy there and I showed Jeremy my Amazon business before I had the course. Right. And uh, Jeremy just did this with one of his first products and we put it through Market Hustle. Cool. And he photographed it better, packaged it better. He went to page one. Amazon consumers saw and went, this is the best one on the page. And now he's number one on page one. Wow. And he does about $700 US a day from that very first product, which you can fit in the palm of your hand. Tiny little product. He buys it for 3 or $4 out of China and sells it for 20 So um, he's doing great. And uh, he's just like, Adam, how good is this? And I said, I told you, Jeremy. <laughs> it works. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's cool. And so Amazon doesn't differentiate between coupon sales and cash sales in that regard. Exactly. In that regard, no. They just see it as a 100% conversion rate. So you send somebody there, they buy it, they go, this, this product's converting like crazy. Wow, that's a great hack. It's a great hack. And, our, and we service companies from huge companies, a market hustle. Previously, it was I Love to Review, which was the largest review company. Before Amazon changed the rules, you used to be able to give away products for free in exchange for a review. As long as people wrote in the review, I got this product for free. Amazon changed those rules on October 3rd, but I own that company and we built up the largest review company in the world. And then when the rules changed, we changed it to market hustle and so we had to change our tact. But we've still got some of the biggest Amazon sellers in the world as clients. Market Hustle. I want to drop a link for in the chat for people. How, how am I spelling it again? Sorry. Market uh, and then Hustle. H-U-S-T-L dot com. S-T-L dot com. Yeah. No, no E on the end. So Market Hustle is, is, is one you should use. And for tracking products, if you want to know what products are selling on Amazon, like if you find a product on Amazon, you want to know the sales, use my software company. It's Zonguru. So Z-O-N as in Amazon. So Zonguru dot com. I've got a link for that right here too. So just drop both of those links in the chat if you're watching. Cool. Well, that's a pretty epic overview. Um, mm, mm, mm. So where to from here for you? Well, you know, I'm, I'm done on a business side in terms of I've got, you know, reliable education, which is my education business. And then I've got the photo company, the software company and the market hustle company, which I just talked about all of them. Um, so professionally, I'm fulfilled and busy. Um, but what I'm really interested in now is just nursing these businesses along over the next decade and, uh, and ramping up on the contribution side where that's where my fulfillment is. So um, that's why I'm doing stuff like this. I, I love talking about how you can build, you know, professional, you know, successful, profitable businesses and do good in the world. So I want to do more of that. And personally, I'm, uh, you know, looking to get into a relationship. I, have, um, I haven't been in a relationship for a bit, so I really want to take care of that side of things. So I'm, I'm putting that on the agenda. An eligible so, bachelor. <laughs> yeah, maybe not too much longer. I, I want to find a nice lady and uh, right. a better life with her. But it's just business has been, I've been traveling the world for the last few years now, pretty much perpetually. Um, and it makes dating really hard. So I'd like to find a, a nice girl. and, and Nice Aussie uh, lady? I don't know, maybe. We'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. Great. And so on the impact side, uh, this, this trip that you that you did to Bali recently and with all of, all of this cataract surgery, that, as you mentioned, relates to uh, reliable education. Um, do you have any plans to build an impact 
which of your ventures do you want to build an impact model into next? You, will you build it into your Amazon brands or one of these other supplementary businesses? Interesting. The, the, all of them are, except my Amazon brand, uh, which started five years ago, uh, has impact built in. So all oh, of cool. them are doing and they're involved in the iCharities as well. So um, other than the only one that isn't is my Amazon brand. I just haven't had a minute to actually incorporate it. But um, yeah, they're, they're all in there and... Um, and everything I do now, it's it's you know pretty much embedded in them. Yeah. What what impacts? Uh, what what are the, some of the impacts pieces with your other ventures? Same thing. They're just okay. those two. The same. Kiba okay. and uh, the eye surgery. Uh, okay. The other one we do is we get with our photography company. We get um, people send in products. So sellers send in products from all over, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and we give them the option that they can either pay to have the sample sent back. Um, or, um, or we can add it to a charity basket. So at cool. the end of the year, we make up baskets of all this product that's been sent to us from beauty companies and camping companies and whatever. We put them in the gift baskets and we distribute them out to families in need around Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where the office is. Awesome. That's cool. Um, I'm just having a quick glance at some of the chat. Uh, Suzette has been dropping a few... Things. Suzette, did you want to chime in and uh, and have a chat or or ask Adam anything directly? I'll unmute you and you can just say no or yes. Yes. Cool. <laughs> go there for we it. Go. We got Hi you. There. I, anyways, that was all absolutely fascinating. I do have a few product ideas. I'm a little far down the road. I started Hi. them a few years ago. My daughter's in the background saying hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, so I was curious. I just missed the very beginning because I had to pick her up from work. But um, you know that restoring vision part? How did you pick that? Was that something you were partnered up with? Or what was the little story behind that? Great question. How you chose that as your yeah. give back part? Yeah, so what happened was I was on that flight from Singapore to LA and I watched the video and I was sobbing like oh, a freaking child. That's good. Air, right? And I was like, oh my God, this we is. You had crazy. to do something about it. <laughs> I suddenly got off the plane and the video was actually by an organization called 202020. Yes. Uh, you can Google it. Um, but what they are, they are is like a, it's almost like a marketing organization for charities. Mm -hmm. and so I said, look, I'm happy to, I'm all in. Like, how do I get involved? And I said, the only thing is I, I don't want to give money alone. I want to give money and I want to be there. I want to go on the ground in the village. And a lot more powerful, like, right? Holding up a sign where they read the numbers, but I actually want to be there and I want my students to be able to come and, you know, whatever that number is. And they said, look, we don't actually do the surgery. We have field partners that do the surgeries. Here's a list of hospitals and field partners. So I went down the list and I found John Fawcett um, and and I looked around at all the various websites, and if you look up John Fawcett, F A W C E W T, um, John Fawcett Foundation, yeah. you'll see his website, and it is by far one of the best websites because a lot of them are just hospitals or they're not really geared up. Um, yeah. He's been doing it for twenty years. They're beautifully geared up to it, and so I said, look, this is what I want. What can you? What can we do? So. They quoted me a package. They said, for X amount, this is the experience. And I was like, perfect. So I wrote them a check, flew over to Mali to meet them, and sat down with John just four weeks ago or something like that. And mm -hmm. um, and his assistant, whose name is G'day, of all names, and me being an Australian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, eh? <laughs> oh, G'day, G'day. Yeah, G'day, G'day. So they, they <laughs> took me to John and we spoke about, with. they showed me maps of Indonesia and the impact that we, and, and, you know, at the level we contributed, we were kind of a senior yeah. contribution. Most people give $100 or whatever. So they sort of said, come on in, meet the financial team. And, um, and uh, yeah, that was basically as simple as that. And um, we get to actually participate. So we, we get picked up in Sanua. Uh, they've arranged some buses to take us all out onto a three-hour drive to the edge of Bali, of the island, and then we get on boats to... Uh, a little uh, island it takes about 45 minutes on the boat when we get there the whole village comes oh. down because oh. they're so stoked oh. yeah and then and then it's a three day, it's actually five days but we're taking the team for three so we arrive on a friday 
uh, afternoon. We work together all day Saturday and do the surgeries. And on the Sunday, we take the bandages off. And you watch these people literally see for the first time. Mm. Yeah. 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 I could just imagine that feeling would be really good, would be really good. So I've had these product ideas for a while and some things had set me back with things going on. So now I'm revisiting it and hooking up with the evolved um, enterprise here was more, it kind of fit with like when you were talking and you're touched by part of what it is that you do, right? Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, selling but giving back, right? It makes it less about the money and more about the whole big picture of what it is we're doing, right? So early on, I felt like, because I have integrity in my life and everything I do in my business and whatever I do at home, I always felt when I was trying to start online, it just didn't feel as ethical somehow or other. I don't know. But I feel like with the give back part, I feel much more, I don't know, comfortable at home with it. Or maybe I've been learning about it so long, I just have to step my foot in. So, but I was curious how you chose and I see now, right? It's just something came across your path that sort of touched you and then you were able to take that forward. My other little question was around um, uh, when you're, you're uh, sharing the information that you do give back as part of the organization and the information on Amazon, right? Would you slide that? Okay, so you know how when you go on Amazon, you got all the pictures of the product and they go all the way down. You wouldn't have some picture, like that mother-son thing you talked about, right? They wouldn't have a picture of themselves there, would they? Or would they talk, would they put it in their picture so that as people are looking through, it would come up there? Great point. I'm sure that you could. I haven't done it, but I'm sure that you could. And I'm sure that it would make a difference, you know? I think, eh? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Just for the photo. If you go to Indonesia and do one of these blind trips, and say 10% of the charity, here we are in Indonesia doing this work, you know. Um, again, it comes down to where your heart is. And I think people yes. can see straight yeah. through being phony, but if it's legitimately what, you, what you're passionate about, um, yes. it shows. Can you put videos on there or is it mm-hmm. only, or can you only put photos? You can put videos on. You right. can, but you have to be a certain level of seller. So okay. it's what they call platinum sellers. Most of us won't be platinum sellers anytime soon. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Great, okay. great question. That was all. I, um, yeah, all, I just thought what you were doing, your whole package, everything is just fascinating. It's really impressive. Thank you. Thanks so much, Suzette. Does anybody else uh, want to, does anyone else have a question for Adam? Feel free to unmute yourself or uh, you can press a button to raise your hand and then I can unmute you. Looks like Matt, do you just unmute? Anyone, anyone, anyone? Chime in now. No. Okay, cool. Well, um, so we've got five minutes to run. So just to wrap up, uh, Adam, you have a book coming out soon as well, yeah? Yeah, I have a book coming out called Primed, Your Guide to Building a Thriving Amazon Business. Mm-hmm. Um, super excited about that. It's going to mm-hmm. be out soon. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, you can learn more about that. Or you can, if you want to learn more about Amazon, just go to our website, reliable.education. So there's no .com. It's just reliable.education. Um yeah, book coming out, um, lots of press coming up. So, um, yeah, running around doing a bunch of stuff. So it's all good. Cool, cool. Uh, one last question for you then. So uh, I'm interested when, when you were back in Bali at that inflection point in your life and Rick asked you to write down the, the things that bring you most joy. You wrote the ocean, being in the ocean, and I'm fascinated to know what else. Um, uh, yeah, being in the ocean. Um, Helping people, I, I, I find a lot of joy in that. Um, and uh, another random one was just being on a jet ski. Uh, okay. Full speed on a jet ski. Where I live here in Australia, there's like these big waterways. Uh-huh. I'm not here, but when I am, I like to get on a jet ski and just no phones, no distractions, just full noise. <laughs> um, I can't recall awesome. those. 
Yeah, just basic stuff, you know. None of it really yeah. had to do with me. It all had to do. I think another one was riding around in a new city in the back of an Uber and a cab. Right. Just not having, just, just riding around, looking out the window and seeing a new part of the world. I, I get a lot of joy from things like that. Yeah. Sounds like you get, you get a lot of that in, in your work. So you've built that into your, into your work now. You have a lot of travel and... Yeah, maybe too much. A lot of that. Yeah. Cool, man. Hey, well, it's been a real pleasure. That, and uh, I've, learned a, I've learned a whole bunch. I'm sure everyone else on the call has too. And, um, and just hat off to you again for, for the impact work you're doing and, um, and, and demonstrating, you know, how that can, um, how that can collide with the, with the e-commerce market and particularly on, on uh, Amazon. So congrats. Keep it up. Thanks, and thanks very much. No all right. I'll see you later. Thank you for coming. Brilliant. Bye. Cheers, Adam. Catch you, mate. Bye.